Yo, what's up guys, how you doing? Uh, today we're going to do a tutorial on how to upload your uh, file submissions from a user, from a web client using uh, IPFS, using, we're going to be using NFT storage, but you can, there's lots of different other alternatives. You can use uh, web, web free storage, which is what I was going to use, but um, the API, I couldn't create a new API key, it was acting up a bit. Uh, now the reason why you might want to store something in a decentralized way is because uh, one, it's like decentralized, you don't have to rely on something like the Google, well, I say rely, it's obviously going to be pretty solid, uh, but the Google um, ecosystem like Google Cloud or uh, AWS or hosting your own kind of database. Uh, so we're going to store it and it's also free by uploading it to the IPFS interplanetary file system. Um, up to a certain amount. This is using the NFT storage provider. You can create your own node and all these things. Uh, I'm going to show you what kind of the use case is. So basically my DAO, Circle Students. Uh, I want to create a little earning kind of platform where people can um, essentially find bounties. At the moment, it's only me who's offering the bounties uh, for a project which I'm doing um, in Indonesia. In the future, other people hopefully will be able to see the value in it. You'll, as a user, you'll go on it and you'll see, okay, it's a payout. So the, the winner of the bounty chosen by the issuer um, will basically receive the payout. And what I was thinking is obviously you're going to need to upload a file, but we can actually tokenize this file into an NFT so that the person who is submitting it keeps maintains that ownership aspect. Uh, I think that's quite an interesting direction to go down. So basically, we're using the NFT storage. Uh, you can find the documentation on their website. Uh, what I've done is I've just created a uh, an NFT store, and annoyingly, I, I didn't record it with any video, with any audio. So this is why I can't do it live. But I just created like an NFT storage TypeScript file, uh, imported, installed NFT storage with uh, npm. And yeah, we've got these, uh, so these file and blob is just the same as like the node module ones, the MP, I think, yeah, the ones that come naturally in node, we're able to use them here. Um, we're using the file reader API as well, because we're gonna be passing in the file which gets submitted by the user, gonna read in that as a buffer. And then once that's loaded, we're gonna be handling all of the, all of the NFT storage stuff. So firstly, we're gonna store the file and we're gonna get a CID for the specifically stored file. This is what we're doing over here. We're storing it, converting to a blob, storing the blob. Uh, and then we're gonna console log that out. Then we've got the metadata as well. And within the metadata, we've got the CID, the content identifier for the file that we've just stored. Uh, then we're gonna be storing that itself. So this is gonna be storing the metadata. Uh, now, as you can see, we've stringified that because it's gonna be an object, made that a blob, encoded that blob, got a, uh, C a, a car as a, content archive reference, and then we're storing that, and then we're getting the CID. And this is basically it, this is what's gonna be our NFT metadata. We'll, we'll be using, and this is not included in this video, but we'll be using Hedera Hashgraph uh, to create the NFT, and we can use the CID for that metadata. Um, let's close that. Uh, and then basically, yeah, so we're using a Svelte application. Firstly, the way that I'm uh, I'm using Ubeek, which is just a, a component library, quite minimalist, and they have like a file input uh, component. So over here, got the file uploader accepts PDFs or docxes, and the value is being bound to our variable value, and it's an array. So we need to get the zeroth index, and and basically, once we so because we're using this file reader. Uh, we need to do it in a browser environment for Svelte. So that's why I'm saying on mount, once everything's mounted, then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say NFT storage equals, and we're going to be doing an, uh, a dynamic import of the NFT file, getting just the default export. Uh, and that's going to be the function, which when we have a value which isn't equal to null, aka whenever something's been put in, then we're going to call that function with that file. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, you do need to have a uh, environment variable with your public API key. Um, and yeah, at the moment there's not any like kind of uh, response back to the back to the user, which there should be. But as soon as they upload it, we're gonna demonstrate it now. As soon as they upload it, it's gonna automatically do it. So we've got the files here. This is just the file which has been uploaded, and then this is the whole 
uh, objects which we'd use for the metadata. We can search this now, archives.io slash that. So this is going to be the uh, JSON. Uh, oops. Let's go back. Archives.io uh, slash archives slash. Cool. So we've got the metadata and then we can check the file as well. So this is going to be the PDF. And look, boom, awesome, isn't it? Absolutely awesome. Um, so yeah, it's literally just the whole PDF, 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 really high quality and totally free. And this is how we're going to be monitoring the submissions. Uh, so yeah, um, stay tuned if, if, if you're interested in kind of DAOs and all of that stuff. Uh, and you're and you're happy to like help out community, which would be me, for example. Please get in touch. I love to I love to network. And if you have any of your own bounties or any other anything else, yeah, hit up. Let's 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 chat. Let's talk. All right. God bless everyone.